Hello, another one of my favourite books, the Oxford Dictionary of Quotations, and um, the copy that I have is the fourth edition, 1992. Well, that's partly because I got it cheap in an op shop. Uh, I see now that um, they're, they're up to the eighth edition and it's available online. Um, yeah, so I, I got my copy really cheap. But the other advantage I find of these uh, um, little bit older versions is that they haven't been um, tweaked to fit uh, the latest PC ideas. <laughs> so uh, you'll see what I mean when, when, I, when we get down to it. Anyway, um, Proverbs are the distilled wisdom of the wisest and the wittiest, so well worth reading. And um, if you particularly like the um, quote from a particular author, then you know we can look him up and, and read some more of what he wrote. So it contains proverbs in several different languages as well as English, so that's an advantage. You can read um, proverbs in, I don't know, six or eight other languages. Uh, including Greek, Latin, French, Italian, Russian. So you can read them in, or see them in the original language, and then underneath there are translations. Yeah, and Lord John Russell said, a proverb is one man's wit and all men's wisdom. So you can see straight away here, uh, the use of the word um, man is no longer PC. <laughs> There we go. So here's our first example. I wouldn't say that when you've seen one Western, you've seen a lot, but when you see you've seen a lot, you feel like you've seen one. Catherine Whitehorn. Now here's an interesting one. There is nothing the body suffers, the soul may not profit by. He who rises from prayer, a better man, his prayer is answered. It's pretty good, isn't it? This collection is, is a little bit random. We jump around a bit, but they're all interesting to me. The notes I handle no better than many pianists, but the pauses between the notes, ah, that is where the art resides. So, <laughs> is he joking or is he serious? Maybe he is serious, but if so, I have to admit it's too deep for me. But it's very interesting the way he's he's expressed it there. <laughs> Yeah. It's only with the heart that one can see rightly. What is essential is invisible to the eye. It's a French uh, World War II pilot, Antoine de Saint-Exupéry, author of Le Petit Prince, The Little Prince. And a different um, style, go directly, see what she's doing, and tell her she mustn't. It's the Satirical magazine Punch, giving advice on child rearing. Alexander Pope, an essay on man. He calls man, Hubert Cohen if you like, the glory, the jest and riddle of the world. Hmm, very interesting. Here's one from Max Planck, German physicist. A new scientific truth does not triumph by convincing its opponents and making them see the light but rather because its opponents eventually die and a new generation grows up familiar with it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And I like this one. Never ask of... Whoa, look at that. I made a mistake. Never ask of money spent where the spender thinks it went. Nobody was ever meant to remember or invent what he did with every cent. Pretty clever the way that every line rhymes and um, it expresses a uh, nice little thought. Knowledge is proud that he has learnt so much. Wisdom is humble that he knows no more. Victor Hugo was a madman who thought he was Victor Hugo. <laughs> I love these, these um, paradoxical statements that in, at first look to be stupid or, or nonsensical. But when you scratch a little bit, and when you think about it, and maybe find out a bit of background, you find that it's a very clever way of expressing 
quite a deep and interesting truth. Victor Hugo was the biggest name writer in France at the time, I, and Cocteau, I guess, was was a um, a writer also of not such great reputation. And maybe there's a little bit of jealousy here, but um, Cocteau is saying that Victor Hugo was crazy and conceited, but he says it in a striking and attention-grabbing way. So when he says he thought he was Victor Hugo, well, Victor Hugo is a big name in France in the 19th century and still. So if you think you're Victor Hugo, then you think you're very clever and famous and great. Well, Victor Hugo <laughs> obviously thought he was very clever and famous and great, but Cocteau's opinion of him was that he was basically a madman, and he's expressed it in this very clever little saying, Victor Hugo <laughs> was a madman who thought he was Victor Hugo. <laughs> um, this is the sort of English up with which I will not put. That's another one of Winston Churchill's clever little sayings. And um, the, he's talking about the rule that you're not allowed to end a sentence with a, pro, a, a preposition. And uh, so he's, he's put the preposition up back in front of the verb put. And it, 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 it just comes out to be silly English. Of course, you would say, this is the sort of English I will not put up with. But then you've got, well, these two uh, uh, prepositions or, or particles coming after the verb. So he's put them in the front, and it, you see how, how silly it is to try and follow that rule. How about this? I have nothing to say, and I am saying it, and that is poetry. John Cage. Life is like playing a violin public and solo and learning the instrument as you go on. Samuel Butler. An expert is one who knows more and more about less and less. An atheist is a man who has no invisible means of support. And so that's a play on, on the, uh, the phrase that say a visible means of support. He has no visible means of support if uh, a person is, is living, but we don't know how he's earning a living. So we say he has no visible means of support. And um, so an atheist is a man who has no invisible <laughs> means of support. Earth's crammed with heaven and every common bush a fire with God. It's a reference to uh, Moses seeing God in the burning bush. But Elizabeth Barrett Browning, a 19th century English poet, says um, you can see God everywhere. Here's another physicist, a contemporary of um, Max Planck, who we just had a quote from. One of the favorite maxims of my father was the distinction between two sorts of truths. Profound truth, recognized by the fact that the opposite is also a profound truth. So here's, we are looking again at paradoxes. In contrast to trivialities, where the opposites are obviously absurd. <laughs> William Blake. Um, 18th century English mystical part. He who binds himself to a joy does the winged life destroy, but he who kisses the joy as it flies lives in eternity's sunrise. So isn't that a thing about life, how something makes you really happy, but it's gone, and we try to recapture it, but we can't recapture it. So Blake says, kiss it as it flies, and you live in eternity's sunrise. Um, this was a little a note that this um, soldier wrote to himself. He was involved in the English Civil Wars in the 17th century. O oh Lord, thou knowest how busy I must be this day. If I forget thee, do not thou forget me. Don't you forget me. And he, here's another note that a, a soldier wrote from a, a same, same kind of era. O oh God, if there is a God, save my soul if I have a soul. Oh, well, there's some honest doubt. We're going to read about honest doubt in a minute. Here's a couple of um, sayings that were apparently inscribed in uh, the temple at Delphi in ancient Greece. Gnosi seaton, know thyself, and maiden agan, nothing to excess. Wise words that... Um, are still worth considering all those centuries and millennia later. 
I don't want to achieve immortality through my work. I want to achieve it by not dying. <laughs> After being turned down by numerous publishers, he decided to write for posterity. <laughs> now here's one. Um, I'm not quite sure exactly what it's supposed to mean, but it, it certainly sounds very interesting. Life like a dome of many colored glass stains the white radiance of eternity. That's lines taken from the middle of a poem by the, uh, what's, I suppose, 18th, 19th century uh, English poet Shelley. We're thinking about education is what survives when what was learned has been forgotten. Laws are like cobwebs, which may catch small flies, but let wasps and hornets break through. Very true. Here's another scientist. Discovery consists of seeing what everybody else has seen and thinking what nobody else has thought. For nothing worth proving can be proven, nor yet disproven. Therefore, be wise. Cleave ever, stick to the sunnier side of doubt. And here's some more about doubt from Tennyson, the 19th century English poet. There lives more faith in honest doubt, believe me, than in half the creeds. And uh, we conclude by a couple of um, interesting uh, quotes from people who have glimpsed something beyond the, the um, boundaries of this world. Ever and anon a trumpet sounds from the hid battlements of eternity. Those shaken mists a space unsettle. But then, round the half-glimpsed turrets slowly wash again. So, he's saying that um, in this world we can't see much. It's as if there's a mist kind of covering our eyes. But occasionally, something happens, and he compares it here to a distant trumpet. Sounds from the head battlement. So he's comparing eternity to um, a, a distant castle that's hidden by the mists. And occasionally, somehow, we hear a trumpet coming from it, and it shakes the mists. And for a second or two, we glimpse... We half glimpse the turrets of the castle, but then very soon the mist slowly wash again and covers those half glimpsed turrets. And here's something by this interesting fellow that I, I must read more from him. He's um, 16th century, I think, or 17th century, and he's talking about his boyhood, evidently. Oh, what venerable creatures did the aged seem, immortal cherubims, and young men, glittering and sparkling angels, and made strange seraphic pieces of life and beauty. Boys and girls tumbling in the street and playing were moving jewels. I knew not that they were born or would die, but all things abided eternally. And I guess we've all had this, or well, we can remember things from when we were, were kids, and... Um, the world had a special wonder to it that's kind of worn off. I can see it too in, in my grandchildren. I remember a little guy getting out of the car and um, his delight at seeing the rain and feeling it fall on his face, something that we now take for granted, but he had fresh, childish delight in it. Hmm. So there we have it. That's just a small selection of the thousand plus pages of um, distilled wit and wisdom from uh, um, humankind. <laughs>